is Conrad Steiner. I'm a doctor of medicine. Tonight's story has the title, I Climb the Stairs. Guardian of birth, healer of the sick, comforter of the aged. To the profession of medicine, to the men and women who labor in its cause, this story is dedicated. Tonight's presentation, the field of cardiology, science of the human heart. The object in point, 11 ounces of tissue and muscle, four inches high, three inches wide, four openings, four chambers, four valves. In a single year, it pumps over 300,000 gallons. The case in point, Annie Schrader. She's 19 years old, unmarried. She works in the airport at the newsstand, and she has no idea how very close to death she stands. Upstairs on the second landing. Thank you, Mr. Donnelly. Then stop running. How'd you know where I was? I helped him bring you here. Oh. I was waiting for you up on the second landing. I heard the doorman yell for a doctor, went to see what was happening. There you were on the stairs. I didn't know you were sick, Annie. What happened? I couldn't breathe. Couldn't climb the stairs. I'm sorry, Bert. What for? for being late. First time I went out with you. Getting sick. Not your fault. A lot of people get sick. We can go out together again, can't we? As soon as you're all right. Annie? I don't know. Probably not. Why not? Don't you want to go out with me? Don't you? What'd Mr. Murdoch say? Was he mad when I didn't show up for work? Oh, he's not mad. He knows you're sick. Oh, Annie, I didn't know you had visitors. Oh, Dr. Steiner, this is Bert. He works at United Airlines. Bert, how do you do? 
I'm sorry to interrupt your visit. Well, that's all right. I've got to get going anyway. I'll drop in and see you tomorrow if I can. Nice to meet you, Doctor. See you again, Bert. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. It's a nice looking boy. Is your boyfriend? What? I said, is that your boyfriend? Oh, no. We just both work at the airport. I'm in the newsstand. He's only been there a week. I've been there two years. Feel better today? Mm-hmm. Have any other visitors? No. Just Bert. Your family lives out of town, is that right? Well, I only have my sister. She got married and lives in Nebraska. What's the matter with me, doctor? Do you know? I've got a pretty good idea, honey. I'll breathe through your mouth. The nurse tells me it's been three or four years since you were in for a checkup. Oh, I guess so. I kept putting it off. You know how it is. Breathe your mouth. live alone, Annie? Mm-hmm. I used to have a roommate, but she got married. I like to live by myself. The other night, was that the first time you'd ever collapsed? No, there was one other time. Not so bad, though. About a month ago, I think. What happened? Same thing. It was at the opera house. I couldn't breathe, couldn't get up the stairs. Missed the whole concert. You a regular customer at the opera house? Just the orchestra concerts. Annie, I never suspected it. You're a highbrow. Mm, guess I am. Never thought about it much. Oh, it's so beautiful. What is? The orchestra. Music. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Never get tired of listening. I don't like sitting down on the main floor. It's too much noise. It's up in the balcony, the dark, just sitting there and listening. You can think about anything at all. Go any place you want to. Music's just all around you. Way up the top in the dark. Well, I'm afraid the balcony's gonna have to get along without you for a while. No more stair climbing, at least for the time being. What's the matter? It's your heart, Annie. What's wrong with it? Well, judging from your history, I'd say it happened several years ago. You probably didn't even know it at the time, but your heart was damaged, and it's been going downhill ever since. Do I ever get well? We'll take some chest x-rays tomorrow, and we'll get another electrocardiogram on you. What's that? Well, it's one way of finding out what condition your heart's in. It's just a machine that records the impulses of the heart on a chart. We read the chart, and we can get an idea of what's wrong with you. Oh. And when the lab work is finished, we're going to see a specialist, Annie. Dr. Parrish. If anybody can help us, he can. What's he going to do? We'll find out when we talk to him. Might mean an operation. Oh. A few days later, the patient is re-examined by a chest surgeon to determine the condition of her heart and the advisability of surgery. Chest films are taken, and the extent of damage to the heart is charted by means of fluoroscopy and the electrocardiograph. Here, each contraction of the heart is translated into a series of graphs. They're going to operate on you. When? Day after tomorrow, 8 o'clock in the morning. Oh, it's going to be all right, Bert. What are they going to do? Open up my heart. Huh? <laughs> That's right. Got it here somewhere. You know, I don't think the doctor wanted to tell me at first. Thought it'd scare me, I guess. But I told him it was my heart, and I had a right to know what he was going to do to it. What did he say? Well, this is the way he showed me. You see, this is a picture of my heart he drew for me. Now, the blood comes in through here and all the way down to there, and then it's pumped out this way into the lungs to get more air. 
And then it comes back in through here, down to there, and pumped out this way, back into the body. What's wrong about that? Well, nothing's wrong with it. It's just the mind doesn't work that way. You see this part here? Mm-hmm. Well, this here's one of the valves in my heart. I had rheumatic fever when I was a kid, and, and this valve got all damaged, and the scar tissue grew over it to heal it up. So why are they going to operate? Well, because the scar tissue is growing, and it's closing up the valve. Oh. The valve closes up, and the blood can't get through. It keeps bouncing back into here. That's why this part's so big. It keeps stretching, um, dilating, that's the word. And everything's out of kilter. So what do they do when they operate? Well, after they open up my heart, the doctor puts his finger right in here, down here to the valve, opens it, makes it the size it should be. <laughs> That's all there is to it. When did you say they were going to operate? Oh, day after tomorrow, 8 o'clock in the morning. What are you thinking about, Bert? Nothing. It's going to be all right. I know it will. Sure. So the critical hour arrives, but Annie Schrader will never remember it. Beneath the mask of anesthesia, she dozes peacefully. Meanwhile, nine people, most of whom Annie will never know, prepare to do battle for her life. James Bell, M.D., first assistant surgeon, resident physician, Mercy Hospital. Joseph Allen Parrish, M.D., American Board of Thoracic Surgeons. George Van Buren, M.D., the anesthesiologist. Lewis Waterman, M.D., the cardiologist. Fellow of the American College of Medicine. June Stendhal, RN, first surgical nurse. Barbara Wiley, RN, second surgical nurse. And the circulating nurse, Mary Palachek, RN. Patient ready? Patient's ready. Night. Silk ties. Search your scissors. Two more sponges, please.
rib retractor. And now the turning point, the venture into a world where life and death is separated by degrees of centimeters. The incision has been made at the fifth intercostal space between the fifth and sixth ribs. The ribs have been parted, the left lung gently pushed aside, and the heart of Annie Schrader lies exposed. Completely encasing Annie's heart is a fibrous membrane, the pericardial sac. Gently, with a pair of forceps, it is picked up and held exposed. The next move, open the membrane, enter the heart. Put your hand on the heart. Feel the shock? Mm-hmm. Around the arc. Blood hitting that small opening. Can't get through. It's thrown back. Mm -hmm. Suture. Cardiac frame still. No pulse, no blood pressure. I'm establishing artificial heartbeat, the manual compression. Any pressure at all? Nothing. the time. Any cardiac response? Complete standstill? Nothing. No ventricular fibrillation. One minute. That's it. Good one. Stronger? Another one. Another. 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 What do you think? Wait a few minutes. See if it gets back to normal. Right.
Doctor, all right to go ahead? The color's good. Pulse and blood pressure are good. I'd say go ahead. All right, let's do it. A regular clamp. Scissors. So the actual surgery resumes. The auricular clamp is fixed in place. The incision is made through the wall of the heart on the upper left side, and the surgeon's finger penetrates the opening down into the heart, down to the scarred and contracted mitral valve. The surgeon's finger pushes through the valve itself, parting the scar tissue. Sponge and needle count, please. Very late? You're not late. 